strength and power. Yours alone now and forever. Love this world could never stop. There is no one like our God reaching down to touch the broken. Mercy breaking through this moment. Faithful is the one who saves. Worthy is your name. Oh God, the glory is yours. The kingdom is come and the battle is over. Jesus, in your name we rise and the glory is yours. The glory is yours. Watch and wonder on that day, on that day when time is over. Every heart at last, every heart at last proclaim, worthy is your name. Oh God, the glory is yours, the kingdom has come and the battle is over. Jesus, in your name we rise and the glory is yours, the glory is yours. Oh God, the glory is yours, the kingdom has come and the battle is over. Jesus, in your name we rise and the glory is yours, the glory is yours. Nobody beside you, there has never been anyone. Anything like you, nobody beside you. There has never been anyone, anything like you. Nobody beside you. There has never been anyone, anything like you. Nobody beside you. There has never been anyone, anything nobody. like you. Nobody beside you. There has never been anyone, anything like you. Nobody beside you. There has been anyone anything like you oh god the glory is yours the kingdom has come and the battle is over jesus in your name we rise and the glory is yours the glory is yours oh god the glory is yours the kingdom has come and the battle is over Jesus, in your name we rise, and the glory is yours, the glory is yours. Oh God, the glory is yours, the kingdom has come, and the battle is over. Jesus, in your name we rise, and the glory is yours, the glory is yours. Nobody beside you, there has never been anyone, anything like nobody. Nobody beside you, there has never been anyone, anything like Nobody beside you, there has never been anyone, anything like you. Nobody beside you, there has never been anyone, anything like you. Jesus. 
can turn me no battle no battle can turn me no mountain no mountain can stop me cuz you hold my hand i am walking in your victory cuz your power is within me no giant can defeat me cuz you hold my with you and oh how you talk with me and oh how you tell me that I am your own you know my name
that were called your own, you know my name. We're your prized possession, Lord, you know my name. Oh, Lord, you know my name. You know my name. You know my name. As you say that, know that he knows your name. He knows every detail about you. You know Thank my you, name. You know our name. You know every detail. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. And the Lord says, surely don't you know that I am a personal God? Don't you know that I know your name? The Lord says, yes, yea, verily I walk with you, and yea, verily I talk to you. But the Lord says, in this season and even in this time, will you allow me to guide you? Will you allow me to even lead you, says the Lord. The Lord says there's been a season of striving, making things happen. I have to do. I got to do. But Lord, if I don't, will I this? Will I not? But the Lord says you must do nothing but trust me. You must trust wholeheartedly in me. The Lord says, don't look at your natural circumstances. Don't look at the winds that blow even around you. Don't look at what you have not. Don't look at even the current political scene. Do not look at even the world climate. But the Lord says, it's a season and it's a time that you must stay focused on me. You must lock your eyes on me. The Lord says, allow me to work in your life. The Lord says, give me time. The Lord says, many are moving without giving me time to even work, to not even give me time to even manifest the mountains that I've already moved before you. The Lord says, allow me to work in your life because the Lord says my promises are yea and even amen. And the Lord says, yes, you have the victory. The Lord says, the spirit of fear is even overwhelming throughout this universe, even stronger than it's ever have. And the Lord says, it's a warning from the Lord that the spirit of fear is even strong amongst all. And the Lord says, it's not I, but all, says the Lord. And the Lord says, I've even come so that I would even reveal the tactics and the strategy of the enemy so that you will be able to even overcome something says the Lord. So the Lord says it's not a time to be silent. It's not a time to retreat. It's not a time to sit back. But the time is now that you must fight and you must even declare. You must even decree. You must even speak to that mountain and say be not removed and cast into the sea. You must speak those things into existence. Speak those things that be not as though they were. And the Lord says, it's power in your voice. The enemy is attacking your voice, but you must speak, speak, speak. Do not be silent. Don't allow the enemy to take your voice. Don't allow the enemy to take your breath. You must speak and you must cry out. And the Lord says, I am behind you. I am in front of you. And I'm all around you, says the Lord. So, Father, we thank you, Lord. I take authority over fear tactics. I take authority over any spirit of fear that would attack your people. In the name of Jesus, I curse it out to a thing of not. It shall not come, neither dwelling. Father, I speak life into the people of God. I speak life right now in Jesus' name that they would hear your voice with clarity and they will know who they belong to. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you right now, Father. We just impart 
even prophetic revelation of who they are and that further intimacy with Christ. We just speak it right now because he is your father. He is the loving father. He is your father. Even when your natural father wasn't there, the Lord Jesus Christ says, I am here and allow me to be your father. Allow that oneness, allow that closeness. And there's many here waiting for direction, looking for options. Lord, what should I do? The Lord says the answer is even in your quiet time with me. It's intimacy that is going to guide you in this season. It's a peace that I'm allowing to permeate your spirit, man, and to permeate your soul. And you will know that your Abba Father is here. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for it right now. Once again, we charge that over your people. And, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, as we change the order of the service. If you are, uh, it's time for offering. I'm trying to make that transition. Everybody on Facebook land, welcome. Welcome to Covenant Life Church. You should be seeing ways and opportunities to sow in to this ministry. And if you are here in person and you need envelopes, they are in the backs of your chairs. All right. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, for offering time. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this continuation of worship, this continuation to be in your presence. And, Father, we give thanks to you. So, Father, you uh, just stir them up. Stir up the people. Lay it on the hearts in which you would have them give this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so we'll have the basket here. And if you are making checks, making it payable to Covenant Life Church, if you want to make credit card payments, uh, Elder Veronica is in the back by the door, and she will be taking your credit card payments. We also have texts to give, 616-326-3171. You shall even see that on the screen. And in Facebook land, you should be looking at it too. Welcome. Welcome to Covenant Life Church. Please come up as you're feeling led.
everyone had an opportunity to get. Oh, no rush, no rush. <laughs> I I apologize. Everyone had an opportunity to give. We're good. All right, all right. If you would please extend your hands to the basket as we bless the offering. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all seeds that have been sown here today, Father. Father, I speak life to those seeds right now in Jesus' name. You know the heart of the sower, Father. Father, we declare and decree that it will be multiplied back to them a hundredfold and that they will even draw closer in intimacy with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I got you. Oh, okay. You just do everything, don't you? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I couldn't help but the, in that last song where he knows your name. Yeah. You know, just think about that. The creator of the heavens and the earth and all they contain knows you by name. <laughs> That's fabulous. That's just something that makes me <laughs> get... <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, speaking of names, we have some first-time visitors with us today. Amen. Ashley Gerald, <laughs> Candace Witten, David Jones, Amen. Daniel Tesfani, I believe it is. You know, it's interpretation of tongues, not interpretation of writing. So, <laughs> And Brianna Daniel, Brianna. Amen. Welcome, one and all. We're delighted to have you with us. Amen. You know, uh, today I'm going to be talking about have faith in God. And part of the, the message is about speak to the mountain. And you hear that speak to the mountain come out in that prophecy? And I assure you, Shayla doesn't ask me what I'm preaching today. So, I, you know, when the spirit lines up like that, you know you're on to something. Amen. Amen. So I, I love it when the Spirit brings a plan together. Amen. So I'm just going to read a brief passage of Scripture to you. It's going to be on how power is made manifest. Now the next day, this is Mark 11, verse 12. Now the next day, when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for leaves. Now, Jesus at this time was probably staying at Mary and Martha's house and Lazarus, their brother. And of course, the religious leaders hated Lazarus almost as much as they hated Jesus. You know, because he did something that their theology didn't agree with. You know, I'm glad they don't try to kill. We don't. They can't kill you anymore. At least not yet. <laughs> Jesus was fully God and fully man, and he was hungry. So that tells me he didn't eat breakfast before he left the house, <laughs> like some of you do. I don't. I eat breakfast. Glory to God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to miss eggs and bacon. and Well, I won't go into that because people will get hungry. <laughs> but anyway, he went to look at this tree. And he said it, he saw it in a distance. So this fig tree, now there's fig trees all over that area. But there was something about this one that stood out by itself. And he noticed it. It was early enough in the season that most of the fig trees weren't even blossoming yet. But this one had leaves on it. And if it has leaves, it has flowers too. And I want you to know and understand, at this particular time, Jesus is less than a week away from the cross. So he's not spending a lot of time not talking about anything that's not real important. I mean, he really packed a lot into the last two weeks, <laughs> okay? And he was really firm about this particular teaching. 
there is a fig tree symbolism here we don't want to miss. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. Now, <clears throat> the thing that you have to know is fig trees, if they have leaves, they should have early fruit. Okay? So it wasn't like he didn't know, you know, <laughs> that, you know, this tree would, you know, it should have had some fruit. And it's a symbolic in the sense this represents Israel. They have leaves, but no fruit. Leaves, but no fruit. They look good from a distance. But when you get up close, there's no fruit. I don't want us to be like that. Amen. Amen. I want not just leaves. I want fruit and fruit on top of fruit. I am the vine. You are the branches. Abide in me and I in you. As I, <laughs> Amen. So they had, to, they had a show of religion, but no works of faith. Works without faith will always draw the curse of the law. All right? Works without faith will always draw the curse of the law. Galatians 3.10, For as many as are the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Now, personally, I'm very happy I don't have to live under the law. That, that had to be a tough thing to do. And, you, you know, you can tell from religious people today, you can just imagine what they were like when they were armed with the law. You know what I mean? So, <clears throat> we want to be people who understand faith, have faith in God. In response to going to this tree and not finding any fruit, Jesus said to it, he said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. So he said it loud enough that they could hear it, right? Amen. So first thing we have to notice is faith is voice activated. You have to say something. When we're trying to, when we want God's power to manifest on our behalf, you have to watch the words of your mouth. Amen. So if you would turn with me to Mark 11, verse 20. Faith has to be released to activate the power. Are you with me here? Mark 11, verse 20. Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to him, Have faith in God. I want to emphasize, have faith in God. This is the main part of the teaching that he was giving, was to have faith in God first and foremost. And what he means by that is that you, we have a confidence. We have an underlying love and affection for him. We have an underlying expectation. We have an underlying faith that when, even when the things don't go my way, even when I get, listen, everybody gets disappointed, discouraged, and even finds themselves sitting in their chair wondering, where is God? What is he doing? Why am I going through this? You are not alone. Every believer goes through that. And the ones who deny that, I, I wonder about. <coughs> I really do. Because the adversity and the difficulties and the trials that we face in life some are very, very difficult. And it's hard to understand that if God loves me, why am I going through this? 
But I'm here to say through all of it, have faith in God. That was the very first thing he said when he wanted to talk about faith. He said, have faith in God. Have that basic confidence. Have that inner assurance. Have that inner conviction that no matter what happens, it's going to work together for my good. And some of us have been through some pretty crummy things this year. Amen. But have faith in God. And then he says, for assuredly. Now, this is Jesus talking. When he says, for assuredly, this means I am guaranteeing this. Yeah. Um, not on some rabbi's authority, not some uh, religious expert's authority. I'm giving this to you on my authority. Amen. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now, the thing I wanted to talk about here is assuredly he says, you can speak to a mountain. Now, I don't know anybody who's moved a mountain. And there's no record in the scriptures of anybody doing that. Not even Jesus did that. But it's there to let you know whatever problem you face, whatever difficulty, whatever thing you're going through, nothing is impossible for a man or woman of God with faith. You hear me? Nothing is more powerful than your faith. Amen. Amen. Have faith in God. Nothing is stronger. <coughs> Not even a mountain can resist the power of God. And then he says, well, I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have, have them. So how miracle faith operates? I'm looking for a miracle. How about you? I'm looking for a miracle that Linda will be home to have Thanksgiving with me. Amen. Amen. She's, uh, she's in a rehab center right now, Amen. and uh, she's doing better. Amen. We've got a little ways to go yet, but... Overall, things are looking up. But the last, the last couple of weeks, it didn't look that way. In fact, about two and a half, three weeks ago, I almost lost her. That's how bad it was. The CO2 level in her blood was critical. And I knew she was, wasn't doing well, but I had no idea it was that bad. And... Um, you know, I just thought the prednisone would bring her around again like happened the first time. I, I had no idea. I didn't have any real warning either. But we figured we'd better call the doctor. The doctor says, take her to the ER right now. Because the doctor thought she might have had a stroke. So I got her down to the emergency room. And through that whole process, we ended up in Walter Reed. Got some real good medical care there, and now we're in uh, a rehab center. Uh, only I and a couple people can go in and see her because of COVID uh, restrictions. But she sends you her love and thanks you for, her, for your prayers. And uh, through it all, we're going to take it all. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. You know, the devil, I don't know, he must be crazy because he's tried that girl before and she punches him right in the face. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so it's, it's just amazing to me that, that he would be that stupid. But, it, but you know what? He is that stupid. And, and he, he is obligated to make sure you never have it easy. 
Because if you did, everybody would want to get saved. Amen. Well, I wish they would, but... I was talking with a guy uh, the other day, talking with him about, uh, you know, heaven and hell or real places. He says, oh, you're just trying to scare me. I said, you're right. I'm trying to flat scare the hell out of you. That is the truth. So, <laughs> Amen. Amen. So you see, when Jesus spoke to that fig tree, faith began to work the second Jesus spoke it. All right? Faith goes to the root of the problem. The faith power took all night to become visible in this realm. Are you listening to me? He spoke to it yesterday. It didn't show up till this morning. Now, I'm pretty sure the Lord had perfect faith. So if perfect faith had to wait overnight, I'm pretty sure you might have to wait a day or two. A delayed answer is not a denied answer. Have faith in God. Amen. A delayed answer is not a denied answer. Faith must be applied till the breakthrough comes. Are you listening? I said faith must be applied till the breakthrough comes. You know, we've been fighting this problem Linda has for almost two years now. And we're still doing the battle. Because we know if you give up, then your, your goose is cooked. Amen. You're going to go down with the ship. Amen. Faith must be applied. A delay does not mean there was something wrong with your faith. Will you please write that down? A delay does not mean there's something wrong with your faith. There is a way and a timing that only God knows. Faith continues to work unless you cancel it with your words or your actions. How many times, how many times have I heard somebody say that we're praying for healing, 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 before they get to the parking lot, they say something like, well, I didn't get nothing, so I never do. Well, no, you don't, because you're self-fulfilling prophecy right there. <laughs> You've got to believe. 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, and since we have the same spirit of faith, <coughs> according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. I believed, and therefore I spoke. We also believe, and therefore speak. Amen. The disciples were perplexed. Peter remembers said, Rabbi, look, this fig tree which you cursed is withered away. These men had been with Jesus, had seen Jesus operate supernatural power countless times Amen. before. They saw him raise the dead. They saw his healing miracles. They saw him cast out demons. They saw him feed the 5,000. They saw him walk on water. They saw him calm the storm. They weren't somewhere else. They were right there when he did those things. And yet they were amazed at the application of God's power. They couldn't get over it. All he did was speak to a tree and the thing was dead. So that tells me there's no point in going to Israel looking for it. <laughs> it's probably went in somebody's fireplace, you know what I'm saying? Amen. Jesus is about to teach the disciples how to use faith to manifest the power of God. Now that's what we want. The cross is less than a week away. This is not a parable. You know, people say the parable of the fig tree. It's not a parable. This was a direct teaching point on how to do works of power. How many are interested in works of power? How many are interested in being used by God to manifest his power? Well, about half of us. That's a good. All right, we'll start there. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 4.20 
For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. You know, anybody can claim they have a kingdom, but what power do you manifest? No power, no kingdom. It's that simple. And this gospel of the kingdom, not this gospel of the church, but this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. It's not a gospel of salvation. Now, please don't misunderstand me. How vitally important that is. Because if you're not saved, it doesn't matter what happens next. <laughs> Amen. The gospel of the kingdom, not the gospel of salvation. Now, the gospel of the kingdom includes salvation as the starting point. But this means that works of power must be demonstrated to all nations as a witness. Salvation is a work of that power. But there's other power gifts and power anointings that have to be demonstrated. So Jesus said to them, have faith in God. Have faith in God is the first part of operating in faith. Is the first thing Jesus talked about in reference to using God's power. Faith is trusting, having confidence and a reliance on God's very own character that he will do exactly what he says he will do. A promise is only as good as the character of the person who gave it. Amen. You, I, anybody out here tells me something, I believe you. I believe you because I know you. I know your heart. I know where you're coming from. Amen. Have I ever been fooled? Oh, yeah. But you know what? I'd rather be loving and trusting and get fooled once in a while. Yeah. Amen. Faith believes regardless of circumstances. The absence of any evidence that we can see and reasoning to the contrary. Romans 4.20 says, He did not, speaking of Abraham, He did not waver, at the promise of God, through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. Now, how was he strengthened in faith? Giving glory to God. He gave glory to God in the midst of the battle. Give glory to God. In the midst of the storm, give glory to God. Amen. You know, when the devil hits you with your best shot and you stand there and give praise and honor to God, it just, you want to twist the devil's tail, just do that. He really gets frustrated. Amen. Amen, Shandada. I love it. Kimberly, I, I just raise your hands right there. We rolling back there? Kimberly, I just believe I hear the Lord saying that he's given you a voice to use, so use it. He's going to give you opportunities to sing and opportunities that you have no not of. Yes. I know your struggles, daughter, and I know what you've been through, and I know your questions, and I know your suffering, and I know that you're afraid. But I say to you, daughter, fear not. Fear not, it is I. I have come for you. And I hear the Lord saying that he's going to give you a, a teaching ministry a music, as an instructor, a teacher of music. And I'm going to open the doors and shatter the windows and break the barriers. And you're going to go someplace you've never been before. And the latter end will be greater than the beginning, says God. Amen. We seal that word in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have to believe that God's love for us demonstrated at the cross. You know, there's always that worry about having enough faith. I wish somebody could tell me what having enough faith was. 
You know, it, I don't have a gas gauge for faith. Well, I got three quarters of a tank. I guess that'll get us there. No. When you're attacked with doubt and unbelief, it just means that your faith is working. Amen. If you don't believe, the devil isn't going to bother with somebody who doesn't believe. He owns them already. Abraham's faith was in God himself, not his faith in faith. I can't stand that teaching that's going around today. Have faith in your faith. No, have faith in God, he said. <laughs> Having an <coughs> your own, not having faith in your faith, <coughs> not having confidence in your own personal worth or accomplishment or any other performance. Romans 4, 21, the very next verse, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was able to to perform. Yeah. Now let me just say to you, Abraham didn't start out that way. Yeah. Are you listening to him? He grew in faith. He grew in experience. Amen. Some of the opposition we face is so that we can grow. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. He gave glory to God. Giving glory to God is vital in any spiritual battle. Faith should be in God himself. He, did, he, Abraham, didn't waver at the promise of God. This is talking about walking up the slopes of Mount Moriah with his only son, Isaac. And Isaac was not some little teeny baby. He was 12, 13, maybe 14 years old. So he was old enough to understand, all right? And they're walking up there. They've got the fire. They've got the knife. They've got the wood. And Isaac says to Abraham, where is the lamb? Hallelujah. Oh, brother, don't you know what was going through that father's heart? And his answer was, God himself will supply a lamb, yeah. which he did on Calvary's cross. Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. That's what that means. He saw the sacrificing of a son can't stop your deliverance, can't stop your victory. Nothing the devil has can stop you. Do you hear me? The only thing that can stop you is you yourself. So there are three principles that all work together when it comes to operating in miracle faith. Principle one, faith comes by hearing. Amen. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I can't for the life of me figure out why somebody can't spend time in their Bible every day. <laughs> That's just me though. You know, unbelief comes the same way. Who are you listening to? Who, who, whose advice do you take? I don't take too many people's advice. I'll take my elder's advice. I'll take my deacon Bill Flood's advice. Amen. And there's other people that I, you know, I counsel with and think, you know, that, you know, they're, they're worth taking the time to evaluate what they're saying. And of course, my favorite counselor is Linda, you know. And, and I, just let me say here, the best part of it is Linda has never, in the 35 years we've been married, she has never tried to manipulate me with a word from God. Amen. Amen. And I haven't done it to her because I know she can see through it, so I get... <laughs> uh, I wouldn't do that. But unbelief comes the same way as faith does. It's what you listen to. Principle two, faith requires action. James 1.22, be doers of the word and not hearers only, 
deceiving yourselves. You know how many self-deceived believers we have? You know how many guys I went to Bible school with that are sitting in church waiting for God to raise them up? I said to him, you know, after a while, you'd get the idea that maybe he just wants you to go someplace and start. It's what Linda and I did. We had no idea what we were doing. We, we went and rented a, a, a little room at a, uh, what was it? I think it was a Days in, And just put out flyers. We didn't have... Uh, if, you know, internet advertising and all that, just put out flyers around the neighborhood and started. We were in Vienna. <laughs> you know, we had five people come in. We almost passed out. Oh, wow, holy moly, that's incredible. <laughs> Amen. But you see, if you don't start, you'll never get there. God steers a moving car. You have to have corresponding action to what you believe. Laying on of hands must be done in faith. Empty rituals don't accomplish much. In law three, faith is voice activated. How did Jesus say to activate faith that would move a mountain? Believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth. How do you get saved? Believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth. Amen. Amen. You know, that's the most important miracle of all. I mean, if you do that and the next day you drop dead, you went to the right place. It takes a lot of power to move the darkness uh, and of hell out of your life. Amen. Amen. True faith originates in the heart. Believe unto righteousness means that faith has motion and produces a result. A person who truly believes will be changed by what they believe. Otherwise, it is just mental assent. Amen. When I go out to get my car to go home and I push the button, I fully expect that car to start. Unless we're in Shayla's car. In that car, you just have to sit down and, and the thing starts. I said, oh my God. There, <laughs> it's like flying in a spaceship, her car. She has one of those Teslas. Beautiful car. Amen. <laughs> Faith only works in your heart and your mouth. Faith in the heart is always dynamic and life-changing. Amen. Guard the words of your mouth. Please, please, ask the Lord. Lord, put a watch over my mouth. I don't want to be going around saying something stupid because what you say is what you're going to get. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. And in the kingdom of the spirit realm, there's nothing more powerful than words spoken in faith. Jesus exaggerated about the mountain to make a point so that we don't forget. The point is, he was making, is there's no obstacle greater than your faith in God and in his word. Faith has no limitations. <clears throat> so Jesus made the power manifested how? Jesus raised the son of the widow woman of Nain. And he said, young man, I say to you, arise. And the boy sat up. Wow, I think I'd pass out. You got to be kidding. <laughs> wow. Lazarus was raised from the dead. Now, when he had said these things, said these things, he cried with a loud voice. Lazarus, come forth. See, he knows your name. He said, Lazarus, come forth. You know why he said, Lazarus, come forth? Because if he had said Lazarus, all of them would have come up. <laughs> he said, Lazarus, come forth. He spoke it. 
Wind and waves obeyed Jesus. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. We were out tuna fishing one time, and in New Jersey, the tuna fish, you have to be out there a ways. And you know what I mean? It's like 90 miles offshore. It takes almost all day just to get out there, and then you fish at night or a day, a night and a day. And, uh, you know, it gets pretty wild out there. And I went, <laughs> we were out there one time, and all of a sudden this wind came up, and the waves are, you know, waves about the size of that wall right there. Now, that doesn't look too big, but when you're in a 28-foot boat, it does. <laughs> and I'm sitting in the back, I'm like, oh, God, oh, Jesus, get us out, get us out of this. <laughs> And the Lord said to me, you know what to do. I said, what do you mean? He said, he said, you know exactly what I did. The devil sent waves to kill me, too. You know what I did. So you know what? And I did, all of a sudden, I didn't care what the guys on the boat thought. I just went up to the front of the bow, and I commanded the sea and the waves to cease and be still. You know, within an hour, the moonlight was out. Amen. And it's, a, and it's a good thing because I can swim, but I'm not that good. <laughs> I can't swim 90 miles, <laughs> especially now I got too much extra ballast. <laughs> Amen. Father, we just seal that word in Jesus' name. Amen. Will we have uh, Shayla come up and give the... Uh, Announcements, and then we'll do the, uh, oh, we got a little one back there. Oh, you're babysitting. Okay, but you have to do the announcements now. <laughs> Mostly because I don't know what they are. I don't know what's going on. I'm just in charge. <laughs> no. Amen. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. 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 <laughs> so, everybody saw that clip, huh? <laughs> I have to show you. <laughs> it was uh, what? <laughs> Family Feud. Yes, that's what it was on. <laughs> All right. Church announcements. Today is the last day to donate for the food drive. <laughs> if you are in need of a donation, please send your request to covenantlifechurch7 at gmail.com. Those requests are confidential. If you feel led and just, if you need a food basket, please, 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 we will be there for you. All right. In honor of Thanksgiving, the following services have been canceled, okay? Well, remember, we'll always be here on Sunday. So Friday night, 1126, that's right, 1126, that is the day after Thanksgiving, we will not have service. Uh, we will not have prophetic class that Sunday. That is, um, yes, the Sunday after Thanksgiving, nor Monday after Thanksgiving. All right, so the seniors... Whoop, 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 whoop. S-E-N-I-O-R-S. Seniors are the very best. All right, seniors. We're having a Christmas Fellowship White Elephant Gift Exchange on December 11th from 2 to 4 p.m. If you have any questions about the gift exchange, please see Elder. All right, CLC, a day of Christmas celebration will be held here at Covenant Life Church on December 19th. All right, celebrate Jesus. Regular week services on no Monday night services tomorrow in honor of Veterans Day. Tuesday night prayer tabernacle is at 7.30 p.m. Dial-in can submit, you can submit your prayer request on the website, and then we have regular service on Friday. And we also have prophetic class next Sunday. Woohoo! 
All right. That's all I have. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. We're just going to give a couple prophecies to people on uh, Facebook. So we'll close the service now so you can go if you want to. Uh, but if you want to stick around for that, fine. Father, we just commit this word, this service, this time into your hands and to your, for your glory and advance your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, we have, are we ready back there? Okay, battle stations. All right. This is for Ella Rice. Ella Rice. Amen. Ella, I just believe God is saying that this is now the time to really pick up where you left off and to pick up some things that you thought you could never have or would never do. The Lord's saying, look for the open door, for I'm bringing an opportunity to you that you didn't even know I, that, that you was for you. And have a faith in God. Just believe for great things. And God is going to give you the desires of your heart as you press into his heart, he's going to demonstrate himself strong on your behalf. And uh, Jocelyn Mason, Jocelyn Mason, amen. Lord, we bless you. We thank you for Jocelyn. Lord, we thank you for Jocelyn's dedication and service to you. And I hear the Lord saying that sometimes the, the, what you, we say service to him, you think what you serve and what you do for God is, isn't enough or it's just a small thing. And the Lord wants to say that you can't give a child a glass of water in my name and lose your reward. And God says he's going to bring a reward to you for your efforts. And the Lord is saying to relax in his presence. Open your spiritual ears and listen. I have a divine plan for you, and you're missing some steps I want you to take. So the Lord says, press into me, ask, and you shall receive. And above all, open your heart, and I will fill it, says the Lord. Amen. We seal those words in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Dismissed.